Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining me while looking to some more MTG market movers for the week. I, it's pretty much been two weeks since I last did this, sorry. But hopefully we'll get through this. Please like and subscribe and let's get started. So the first card, Old Man of the Sea from Arabian Nights. So this card has been moving for a while. I think the last couple of weeks it's been slowly dropping down. In fact, it's been dropping down for the last couple of months. But it's really hard to tell because it's very spiky and because it's from Arabian Nights, there's not many out there. You're going to find a damaged one for $298. 100% it does look like there's been a buyout. Um, $490 to $609, but you can find one damaged copy for $279.95. Don't know if it's actually 100% worth it if it's damaged. You can see the same thing actually happening to a lot of cards in the last couple of days. So we had, obviously, the February to March 2021 spike. A lot of reserve list and old cards spiked. Then they dropped down as someone sold back into the market. And now, January 31, people are starting to buy again. Now, you've got to ask yourself what the main reason is. Have they reached a point of plateauing? Has something changed in the world at this point right now? Is there more stimulus announced? Is there Something has changed and people are willing to buy again from the price right now. This is not in reserve this card. That's a 26 cents version of this card. Um, not exactly a good card, but from Arabian Nights, it's got some worth just because of its collector's collectability. Next, Otherworldly Gaze from Innistrad Double Features. I don't think there's much value there. Crumbling Sanctuary from Macadian Mask. Mask? Um, once again, this is an unusual movement. If for each one damage that will be dealt to a player, that player removes the top card of his library from the game instead. Actually, that's a cool card. That's a really useful card. But until November 21, no one knew it existed, and now it's spiking up. There is a World Championship version of this for 50 cents, whether or not it stays there. You can still buy this from TCG Player for 64 cents. It is reading $7.44, so this $0.64 cents doesn't seem exactly accurate. We'll have to see how that goes. Tetravis from Antiquities. It's an Antiquities card. 2016, Rudy entered. I assume this was mostly a buyout because this was mentioned in some YouTube channel at some point, most likely Alpha Investments. And ever since then, it has just been continually moving up. 2021 obviously caused a big spike, and it was actually moving up just before that. As for the card itself, it's a complicated card, I'll admit. It's probably not that bad. Is it worth $82, $42 on TCG? It's not a reserve list. There's a fourth edition for $0.77. Cents. If there's a fourth edition for $0.77, cents, you're buying this because it's from Antiquities with Black Border. It may or may not fit into many decks that you already have. Sarah Angel from Revised Edition, $1 from TCG Player. There's not much more to say about this card. This card is old and has value because it's unique art and it's a revised edition. But you're going to have to put some value. You're going to find value where you want for these kinds of stuff. Pyramids from Arabian Nights once again spiked up after 2021. Now sitting at 20. Oh my God! Now sitting at 24, uh, $245.95, which is insanely high for the card. But I'm just looking at the all-time high, but I'm pretty sure that was a buyout and completely false. Because that doesn't make sense at all, how it could drop that low from where it was. So, careful with these kinds of spiky cards. I'd see if I can get some good value, and also if you're collecting. Okay, next card, Cursed Rack from Antiquities. Actually kind of an okay card, because in Commander this kind of stuff would be useful. Right now, it's $2.95, not on the reserve list. There's a $26 version from 4th edition. It's a cool card, but once again, you're paying for the antiquities. Blood Funnel from Ravnica, something that isn't in the old school. I mean, this is actually old school, but I actually remember playing Ravnica. So not too old, old school for me. What do I think about this card? It's a really hard card to play with. Non-creature spells you cast... You play cost two less to play. Whenever you play a non-creature spell, kind of that spell unless you sacrifice a creature. Eh, is there a true benefit here? Maybe if you're pumping out creatures, but two less, it's, that doesn't make it two less, two less, two less for each creature you sacrifice. That'll make it a bit more powerful. 
But maybe there's value in it. Someone's going to have to find value at some point, and it has not been printed in forever, I think. This is literally a reserve list card as far as card goes. Blood Funnel has never been printed, and used to be $0.35, cents and now it's sitting at almost $2. Kind of cool. Pariah from 7th edition. Yeah. I'm looking at this card, and I agree that it has some value. It was printed in Conspiracy as well. But I think the funniest thing with this is, even though it's a 7th edition, older version, never been printed for that artwork, the value has only started growing in the last couple of months. So once again, 2021. And I don't know... I don't know if this is the kind of car that you'd want to buy, even if it's 7th edition, because there's a chance that in a commander deck at some point in the future, it might be printed again. Do or die from invasion. I feel like this moved up because of a certain um, release, because this card would have worked well in a... pretty much in any commander deck. This is actually a really, really good, a good card for commander decks. And I think that probably works out in the favor of increasing value when some new commander comes out. Whether or not it's going to be continuing to grow in value is hard to tell. But move from $1.90 to $6 in the last couple of months. TCG play, you can get it for $3.33. Ren and Rin and Ser uh, Seri Inseparable from Buy a Box promo. This is actually just a good card. It's unfortunate I didn't pick it up, but it's just I didn't want to make a deck based around this because it just looks so straightforward in what you can and can't do with the deck. But yeah, $12 on TCG player, it's just a good card if you want to make a fun commander deck. Okay, let's move on to the dual lands. So, Badlands. Still dropping, but a little uptick for Badlands. Uh, TCG player, $345. Plateau. Flatlining, whether or not it picks up from this to go to all-time new highs is remaining to be unseen. This is very stable. This is the most stable I've seen revised market in the last three years. Hey, look at this. This is more stable than the 2018 period, October, um, what is it, December 2017 to September 2018. More stable from May 11th, 2020 to August 20, uh, 30, August 30th, 2021. So that's only had a year and a bit of actual stability. Now we're almost six months into this new stability. If this drops off the same way, I'm expecting this price point to hit $300 average and then maybe flatline or bounce from there again. But we'll have to see what the government does as well. And Tiger, same thing, but it's still very spiky. We'll have to see where this one goes. I am waiting, and it's been very painful to wait. But I think I'm okay with it because whether or not I buy once a month or once every now and then, it's just something that I'm always keeping an eye on. And when the price looks good and when I have a need for it, I'll just see if I can dip my toes back in. So moving to MTG Goldfish, we'll have a look at the weekly changes for the standard environment. With the new set almost coming out, this is still providing some Visibility on what's been happening in the past. So you got Old Norbone for 5% gain to $26.20. Agadam's Awakening, a 5% gain for $18.49. The biggest mover, Grazelik's Illith Scholar. I think I was keeping an eye on this card, but that is really painful to say. But 13% gain for $1.89. Actually, a really cool card. Biggest drops, Malevolent Hermit, dropping 13% to $2.20. Other than that, nothing really big. Moving over to the weekly change for the modern section. I think this is modern. Yep, this is modern. Borrow Palace in the Clouds. 7% gained to now sit at $86.95. That's crazy. Uh, Kazuru Gama. This is a pretty interesting equipment for ninjas. 33% gain to now sit at $14. Life from the Loam. A perfectly good card in almost more, more screen decks. Well, most green decks that have some way of discarding cards, but $18.57 for 10% gain. And Masoko the Humulus, $9.50 and 19% gain. Biggest drop, Higuru the Steel Wind, uh, $21.34, 11% drop. But then again, that one spiked so much that 11% drop is still nothing. We'll have to see where that stabilizes. 
and weekly change days undoing at 27 percent gain to now sit at nine dollars 59 sorry this is for pioneer running it siri inseparable 10 percent gain to now sit at 1820 sliver hive 17 percent gain to now a uh, seven percent gain to now sit at 17 dollars and 57 cents and biggest drop guild pack informant dropping by 13 percent and now sit at four dollars 92. okay well i was actually going to cover the stock market but what I'll do is I'll probably leave it at that. It looks like the uh, dual lands for revised have stabilized. It looks like some of the cards have stabilized for what's growing in the last couple of weeks because all the ninjas and all the samurais and all of that have already spiked. So if anything, the next couple of weeks, they might stop dropping down. And we'll have to see what the new commander decks are that are coming out as well. Anyways, guys. Oh, and I will probably talk about the MTG, uh, sorry, Kamigawa spoilers. But I'll probably make a full video and do a comparison. That might be a long one, but we'll see how that goes. Anyways, thanks again, and have a good one. See ya.